Alright guys, it is another cold winter day here in mid-October. Uh, where are we? It is a Wednesday, I think October 19th, 2020, or is it December 19th, 2020, 2020, listen to me, 2022, although I hear it's about as cold in Florida today as it is in, uh, in New York, baby. So, uh, as Donald Trump would say, where is that global warming when we need it? So anyway, since I'm stuck here in the tiny house again for another day, scared to venture outside the door, I want to uh, kind of continue with my little experiment. I I'm getting mixed results, mixed reviews on doing shorter, more shorter videos than one big long one. So we're going to start out with two of uh, the snippets of the collapse and uh, see if some more present themselves between now and tonight. So uh, I want to start out by uh, tipping my hat to uh, my sisters in, in crime over at Environmental Coffee House. Uh, Sandy and Jennifer, where I guess it was Sandy. Uh, if you look at her uh, latest video from yesterday, which I just finished watching uh, about climate anxiety, I have to say, darling, that was that was one of the sickest, most twisted openings to a video that I have ever seen in the Doomosphere. The first four or five minutes, it, just, uh, it, it, it was as unsettling as working in a chicken slaughterhouse. I do, I do not know where you drag that thing up, but anybody uh, talking about the collapse of a planet on several levels, if you just watch the first five minutes, but anyway, most of the video was talking about a subject that I've talked about a lot uh, today on this channel, not today, but in the past on this channel, and that is climate anxiety. How uh, anxiety over climate change is just freaking people out and, uh, you know, just uh, pretty much ruining their life flipping out over what's going on on the planet. So it's a little bit ironic that uh, while Sandy and Jennifer's video is playing out about how freaked out people are about climate change, we have this article on the mainstream media from good old Reuters news. This isn't Fox News. This is Reuters news <clears throat> today. This was the seventh biggest story on the planet, according to the editors at Yahoo News. How concerned is the planet about climate change? <coughs> Concern about climate change shrinks globally as threat grows, according to this new study. All right. This is Dateline Berlin, uh, for whatever reason. Concerns, which I guess is another way of saying anxiety, concerns about climate change shrank across the world last year, a survey shows, <clears throat> with fewer than half those questioned believing it posed a, quote, very serious threat, close quote, to their countries in the next 20 years. Only 20% of people in China, the world's biggest polluter, said they believed that climate change was a very serious threat, down three percentage points from the previous poll in 2019. The survey by Gallup World Risk Poll showed on Wednesday, uh, I wish they had a lower in here, do they put a link to the Gallup 
World Risk Poll. I, w I want to see that full survey. If I can find it, I will come back with the future rant. Okay, globally, the figure saying that, you know, that they were, had anxiety about climate change. Globally, the figure fell by one and a half percentage points to 48.7% perc in 2021, it said. The corona panic and concerns about more immediate issues such as health and livelihoods and the price of gas and getting a bigger car and what movie on Netflix to watch and what new cell phone to buy and uh, anyway I think you get what they're trying to say here yes may explain the drop the survey based on over 125,000 interviews in 121 countries showed climate change awareness so I don't know if this is the same as anxiety climate change awareness did rise slightly in the US uh, the second biggest global polluter to 51.5 percent so regions imagine this regions with the highest ecological threats are on average the least concerned of all about climate change with only 27.4 percent of Middle East and North Africa and 39.1 percent of South Asian respondents concerned about the risks. Uh, no note on how many sub-Saharan Africans, uh, you know, whose main concern is uh, where they can sneak off to uh, you know, do what they need to do uh, to have more children, as 22 million people face starvation. I really wish we could have gotten uh, those numbers. I can't believe they don't have a link to the actual survey. And of course, we all know why they're running this story. The findings come ahead of the next round of global climate talks when countries meet in Egypt next month for COP27. But despite the shrinking concern about climate, the ecological bill of climate change is growing globally. A study by the Institute for Economics and Peace of 228 countries and territories. I didn't realize there were 228 countries and territories on the planet. Anyway, found that 750 million people globally are now affected by undernourishment and climate change as well as rising inflation and Russia's war in Ukraine will exacerbate food insecurity in the future. More than 1.4 billion people in 83 countries face extreme water stress, where more than 20% of the population do not have access to clean drinking water, the study showed. Several European countries are expected to experience critical clean water shortages by 2040, including Greece, Italy, the Netherlands, and Portugal, the report found, which will also, meaning critical clean, clean, critical clean water shortages, will also hit most of Sub-Saharan Africa, the Middle East, 
and North Africa. So Sub-Saharan Africa and North Africa. So I guess the Sahara Desert is not expected to experience critical water shortages by 2040. So I guess if you live in Africa and you want to escape critical water shortages, you either need to move north from Sub-Saharan Africa or south from North Africa and uh, go get your water out of the Sahara Desert, which will soon be coming to the rest of Africa anyway. So you might not need to travel to the Sahara Desert by 2040, although this was not in the report. It was just implied. <clears throat> what else? Annually, air pollution has cost the world $8.1 trillion dollars or 6.1% of global gross domestic product, causing between 6 to 9 million deaths, the study showed, adding that the average global cost of natural disasters reached $200 billion annually, four times higher than in the 1980s. Yeah, Steve Kalela, the founder of the Sydney-based institute, you know, running this study. Here we go. Quote, negotiators at COP27 need to consider the ways in which climate change is exacerbating the impact on ecological threats and how the international community can mitigate them while well, nobody cares. So we have 118 comments. Uh, I see that Humpty Dumpty must have sat this one out, but here's one from user. User, I don't know and I don't care. Stay away from my money, my SUV, and my patterns of consumption. Eleven thumbs up. I'm assuming that comment was ironic. I, I, you know, I, I don't even know anymore. Uh, when, when I read these comments on uh, Yahoo News, uh, I, I assume that comment was ironic. But speaking of ironic commentators, we're going to come back in the next snippet of The Collapse and hear from uh, one of our favorite doomudgeons, Andy the Gardener, coming right up. Bye, guys.